Okay guys, today I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You know, you watch my videos and you see me walking around, I got my little food pouch and you see me getting my puppies to sit and to lay down and, and you get, get them to come and jump up on stuff and you might wonder, well Stoney, what about staying? How do you get them to stay? Because everybody knows my dogs stay perfectly, you know, and I got to have that because, you know, a lot of times I'll be driving down the interstate and I'll see me a nice little damsel in distress and, you know, I got to stop and help her because that's the kind of guy I am. When I get out there to help her, what I need, I need my dog to get out of the truck and kind of stand guard on the interstate because, you know, there's a lot of evildoers running up and down that interstate. So I need him to, while I'm changing the tire or, you know, whatever it is I'm having to do mechanic-wise for this damsel in distress, I need him over there being vigilant, being alert. I need to know he's going to stay in the place. And I'm going to show you guys right now today how I get that to happen. So y'all stay tuned. Guys, here, are, here is our gear list for teaching the unbreakable sit. We have a tent stake. We have a 15 foot long line, we have a 6 foot training line, and we have a 20 year old Herm Springer slip collar. Uh, in the background you'll notice I have my four wheeler out and on the rack of my four wheeler as always is a rifle. And I got five or six balls laid over here behind the camera. So let me show you how to put all that together and get you an unbreakable sit for your dog. Okay guys, well here let me move my balls out of the way. Now, so here's my tent stake and I'm going to drive it about halfway in the ground. And my lovely assistant is going to throw me his training lead. And I'm going to put the loop of it. Now, that's why I like these particular tent stakes that I get from Centerfire, is they've got the perfect size loop for holding on to a leather leash, traditional training leash, you know. Now, I drive that in there, and this is pretty sturdy. Now, look, guys, this is not, a, this is not like tying out pit bulls with a car axle. This thing is just, it doesn't work like to hold the dog here. It just kind of, if you have a dog that already knows he's supposed to stay, it helps remind him that he's supposed to stay. So if you don't have a dog that's already pretty good at staying, you know, then you're not ready to move on to the unbreakable sit. So make sure you back up and you do your homework right, because this thing, it'll, ha it'll, it'll stop them if they break and they know they're, you know, when, when they run out of leash, they kind of go, oh, oh, yeah, right, I'm supposed to sit down. But it's not going to hold a dog. Like, you can't just use this little old tent stake and leave a dog there and, and go off for lunch or whatever. So use a little common sense here. Okay, well, now let's go find our dog. All right, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to tell Floyd to stay, and then I'm going to walk to the end of my long line and I'm going to introduce a, just a basic real world distraction, people milling about, right? Now if the dog gets up, I'm going to make him stay. Stay. Now I've moved over here off the camera, but I got a hold of my long line. If a dog gets up, then what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to use my long line to guide him back into position, right? And so he's going to do this. The first day we'll do this for 30 or 40 seconds. And you want to work your way up on each level of distraction. You know, a good 10 minutes is a, probably a real reasonable goal. Now, once you've got to your time limit for that day, you say, okay, guys, thanks a lot. You walk back to your dog. Okay. Now, so here I am. I'm back with my dog. Now I'm going to release him and tell him how happy I am that he has managed to stay focused under that level of distraction. Oh, good boy. He's a good fella. Now. I'm going to cut the camera and I'm going to play fetch with him for just a second so that he knows that he's earned some good stuff. All right, Floyd, fetch it up. Now, once you've got your first base level of distraction down, find something that your dog likes a little bit more. For this dog here, he loves chasing a ball. Your dog might like kids or tricycles or who knows what, food, I don't know what it is. Whatever it is, okay, you take in that next week, you rat ratchet up your distraction level. So I'm going to have somebody throw a ball and I'm going to make this dog stay. And the deal I'm making with him is, I know that it's hard for you not to get this ball right now, but if you'll just, go ahead Callie, if you'll just avoid this ball and, and here in a minute you'll see a bunch more balls come. If he'll just avoid them, then I'll come over here and I'll let him up and I'll throw the ball. Again, we're always getting back to this idea of indirect action. I want the dog to understand that if he'll put what he wants on the back burner for me, then I'll be sure to make to make him happy in the long run. And that's what we're always focused on is the long run. So I'm gonna tell him to stay and I'm gonna walk off and Callie's gonna throw some balls. And if he does a good job, I'll come over here and let him go and let him fetch. And if you do this right, your dog's gonna really start to get the idea that when he wants something, he's gotta earn it. He's gotta be calm and patient and show good impulse control. And that's when you know you're really making some progress. Stay. So I'll walk off camera and Callie throws a ball. And then she throws another ball way over there. And then she throws another ball way over there. And then she throws another one. All right. And so now, so that dog's done a great job of staying. So I'm going to come over here 
and I'm going to tell him, oh, what a good job. And I'm going to reach down here and I'm going to kind of quietly and slowly take his leash off of him. And I'm going to reach out here and I'm going to get the ball and I'm going to say, hey, listen, dude, I am so happy with you. I am so impressed that you showed that kind of impulse control that guess what? You get, okay, what you wanted anyway. That's what you want them to understand. Yeah, he'll, they don't have to jump up on you. They don't have to scratch at you. They don't have to do anything crazy. Right here, buddy. They don't have to do anything crazy to get what they want. There's no negative attention seeking here. You don't need it. Listen, just listen to me. Do what I need you to do. If I tell you you need to stay, don't ask me why. Just get over here and stay. And if you'll do that, I promise you're going to get what you want in the end. Okay, buddy. You know, just like that. You see him run off there? And then, like, what I want that dog to understand, he'll... If he just runs right back over here, boy, heel, and gets in position, then we're going to do that a whole bunch of times tonight. It's a real simple concept, you know, stay. He, reinforcement through indirect action. If you find yourself on this back tie and you're having to pull and fuss and carry it on, you're not going slow enough. Okay, now we're going to ratchet up that distraction level even more. Good boy. Okay, now, we just got finished watching Floyd, uh, you know, show real good impulse control when it comes to the ball. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in with something else that he really likes, which is riding on the four-wheeler. Now, if he shows good impulse control and he stays well while Matt's riding his four-wheeler around, then I'm going to let him off and throw the ball. Now, sometimes we'll flip the script on that. We'll have him show good impulse control for the ball, and then we'll let him hop on the uh, four-wheeler and take a ride. But this is just a more convenient way to film it. Right, so the rules still apply. Now I'm gonna put my this my primary reinforcer here in my pocket, and I'm gonna take my leash here. I'm gonna throw that off of there. Now look, remember what this is for. If he gets out of position because he wants to try to get on this four wheeler with Matt, I'm gonna use this to guide him back into place. So I'm gonna tell him, I'm gonna say, stay, and be pretty serious about it. You know, then I'm gonna walk away. Matt's gonna start the four wheeler, and he's just gonna ride the four wheeler in a big circle around the dog. Now this can be real hard because you got a lot of things the dogs, you know, like to do. He likes to ride the four-wheeler. Those wheels turning makes them want to chase it. You'll hear dogs in the background chasing the four-wheeler and uh, or wanting to chase the four-wheeler. You know, these are a lot of things. This is real hard for the dog. So, hey, don't be surprised. Like, you know, you get a one layer of distraction down and the next layer you go to, the dog messes up. Oh, that's okay. Just back up to where you were successful and then gradually start to add more in. Like if he was having trouble with, with this, this four-wheeler coming real close to him, then what I would do is I would have Matt ride it in bigger circles. Now the more he shows good impulse control, the more that I'll have Matt get close to him. Now once he's done, good boy, good boy. Now once he's done a good job, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna take his leashes off, stay. Now, the thing is, is that I know he'll stay right here because, again, the proximity, I'm close to him. And as a result of showing good impulse control, I'm going to go ahead and release him as I throw the ball. Now, when we're working on other kinds of impulse control, we'll have him stay and then go fetch. But for this, I'm going to tie the release and the primary reinforcement of the ball together to kind of make a big impact. Okay, Floyd. Good boy. Now, if I did this right... He's going to run over there and grab that ball, and he's going to come right back into position. Good boy. Now, this is how you know you're doing your obedience right. Because basically, stay. when Floyd comes right back into the, this heel position, he knows more than likely we're going to have to go through another session of being on the tent stake and uh, having to stay. Now, over the course of the weeks, he'll get real reliable at this. As he gets really reliable at it, then I'll just take the tent stake away, and I'll stick with the long line. And then after a couple of weeks of that, I'll take the tent, the tent stake will be taken away and the long line will be taken away. And I will have a dog with what we call an unbreakable sit. But do not be in a hurry. The fastest way to never get an unbreakable sit is by trying to get it too fast. If you want to be good, you got to go real slow and pay a lot of attention. Stay. And then you'll end up with something like that. Floyd, back. All right, let's go to one more level of distraction. Okay, now listen, guys, I don't know what kind of distractions you need to layer at your house. That's up to you. You know, if you live in the suburbs, you're obviously not going to run into the same kind of distractions I'm going to run into. But I know what I'm going to run into. If you don't know what you're going to run into, hey, get your piece of paper, make a list. I'm going to run into kids and dogs and bicycles. I got some goats and some pigs. Hey, and every time I leave a house, 
uh, I'm going to run into somebody riding a four-wheeler and shooting a gun. So that's our last layer of uh, distraction tonight. I got my man stationed up here behind me. He's going to fly in here on a four-wheeler, and he's going to uh, pop a few rounds off, and then he's going to fly off. And now why that's important, you might think that's silly. But listen, when I go to ride these strip mines and stuff, what happens is I'll be out doing something, and if I tell this dog I need him to stay, hey, I need it. if he's going to go with me, i got to trust that he can stay and he can watch out because there's a bunch of young kids and stuff, and they're out there doing evil can evil. You know, and if this dog's running around and he's not uh, being cognizant of staying in where he's supposed to stay, he could get evil knieveled. And you don't want your dog to get squished underneath a five, six hundred pound four wheeler. Okay, so I'm going to tell him to stay and I'm going to throw my long line over there. Okay, I'm going to walk off. Now, as I walk off, remember, I'm always going to practice his stays with me looking away because sure as shooting, you know, when you need him to stay is when you're looking at something else. Like, look here, here comes old dog running right into the right into the field of view right now. You just never know what's going to happen here. So I'm going to tell him, I'm going to say, hey, stay. And I'm going to walk off my line here. And about when I do, here comes my man with his four-wheeler. And I need my dog to stay, you know. And Floyd's sitting around thinking, hey, why is everybody getting to run and play and have a good time? But hey, I need that dog not to have any context. If I tell him to stay, he's just got to stay, and he's got to trust me. <laughs> it's in his best interest, because you never know when there's going to be a redneck shooting a gun <laughs> around him and then tearing off with his four-wheeler, <laughs> you know? You just never know what's going to happen in Kentucky, right? But what I know for sure is if that dog will just pay attention and he'll stay where I put him, if he'll have him an unbreakable sit, then his life is going to be great, because I promise I'll take him everywhere I go. All right, guys, so get out there and train your dogs. Get your four-wheelers out, get your rifles out, or your knitting needles, or whatever it is you like to do, and I'll see you next week.